And my study was looking at oral beta-lactams for step-down therapy for pyelonephritis. Uh, we found ourselves in the situation where the primary um, recommendations in the guidelines for pyelonephritis, um, oral options were fluoroquinolones or uh, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, better known as Bactrim. And a lot of times in the community, there's high rates of resistance. So we have uh, national studies in the United States that have shown 25% uh, or greater resistance to those agents. In some instances, for fluoroquinolones, for instance, um, the guidelines say if resistance is greater than 10% to not use those empirically. Um, so we're really in a, a, a bad situation from a susceptibility perspective. Um, from an antimicrobial stewardship perspective, uh, fluoroquinolones in particular are going to cause high rates of um, increased risk of C. difficile in our hospitals, which is something we're all trying to reduce right now, um, as well as the development of other drug resistance. Um, and then finally, a lot of our fluoroquinolones have um, very harsh side effects um, and, and adverse events. Uh, most recently, the FDA has included an, uh, an additional black box warning for um, debilitating side effects of fluoroquinolone. So we wanted to try to use, see what our other alternatives were for pyelonephritis. So we looked at uh, oral beta-lactams versus an alternative therapy. That alternative was either fluoroquinolone or um, Bactrim for, as, as a step-down therapy from a beta-lactam IV uh, for pyelonephritis. Um, we specifically looked at in patients who were not in the ICU, so these were floor patients. They received a beta-lactam inpatient, um, primarily due to susceptibility concerns. And then um, we had 122 patients who received an oral beta-lactam at discharge, and then uh, 89 who received a fluoroquinolone or a Bactrim at discharge. And I did want to just establish this was based on the judgment of the attending physician that was treating that particular patient. Correct. It was a retrospective study, so we did look at, uh, based on physician preference, on what, what they use to discharge patients. Um, it did meet power to detect, um, we're looking at an, for an 80%, an 85% cure rate and a non-inferiority margin of about 15% and found that oral beta-lactams were non-inferior to um, an alternative, the either fluoroquinolone or Bactrim, for um, readmission to the hospital within 30 days or ED visits within 30 days um, for some kind of urinary cause, so UTI or pyelonephritis. And so what do you see as the implications of that finding for practice? I think it opens up a whole new world of um, oral options. Historically, guidelines have said don't use uh, beta-lactams because they're not as efficacious as our alternatives. However, a lot of the studies had some pretty significant limitations. We wanted to try to address those limitations and really open up the option of oral beta-lactams for discharge. And how convincing do you and your colleagues see these data given it's a modestly sized study and it wasn't it was retrospective non-randomized so how would you characterize the quality of the data given the question that you were trying to address I think we always want prospective data um, I would love for the next step to be either us or somebody else really evaluate the prospective data and be able to call patients and, and ask if they've had um, any urinary symptoms. Um, but in the clinical world, a lot of times we don't, we don't see that. All we see is whether they're readmitted. And we tried to be, have a more sensitive um, response by looking at ED visits as well for a urinary tract infection or pylo. Um, I think it's a, a fact-finding study right now, but we know from a susceptibility perspective um, and from that clinical cure, looking at readmissions and ED visits, that it wasn't, beta-lactams were not um, inferior to our alternatives. We're excited to start using those more. Um, and in our hospitals in particular that we studied, we actually had more patients who received an oral beta-lactam, so we're already doing it. Just wanted to confirm that this isn't causing any, any harm for patients, and we're um, excited to see that, it, that it's not. I think it further encourages the use of an oral beta-lactam for just um, step-down therapy for discharge for our patients, knowing that it's not going to cause harm, um, especially with the new fluoroquinolone breakpoints. Uh, we know even those susceptibility rates are going to look even poorer for fluoroquinolone, so we're excited to, to have an, an option for step-down therapy.